Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BJ Tech News and websites. Yes, everyone now they needs a website. That's the only way that you broadcast what you're trying to advertise to people like myself. I have a blog site that I try to maintain every day for you guys. Provide as much information about technology, any new thing that I get. I try to post it up either in YouTube, which is a website, and or my WordPress site, uh, which is also a website. But a lot of people, rather than hosting their files into another third party, they've been doing everything locally. So I'm going to actually show you guys how to host your own website on a Windows server. So there's a lot of applications out there, and the one that's very popular is WAMP Server. Uh, WAMP also comes with another version for the Mac side, but I'm just going to talk about the WAMP side because it's Windows. So what WAMP stands for? WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP. That's what WAMP basically stands for. Windows, which is the W, uh, is specified only for Windows platform. Uh, you have A, which is Apache, which is the program that actually allows you to host the website. This is the program that puts everything together for you to see those cool looking applications. Uh, MySQL is basically the database that keeps all the web content together. And PHP, which is a very popular uh, language that allows you to write dynamic web content. Uh, and PHP is well known in sites such as Facebook, uh, and WordPress for what I know and other sites out there uh, they're dealing with PHP so as you can see on my screen I have uh, the download section of the WAMP server I'm going to provide this link at the bottom of the description so you guys can get yourself a copy I normally get the latest version and the one that I downloaded is the 32-bit PHP dot uh, 5.4 uh, if you're doing 64-bit download the 64-bit I actually downloaded 32-bit because uh, as you can see in my testing machine right here, uh, I call it the BJ-WAMP. Uh, it's a Windows 7 machine. You can actually build this on a Windows 7 machine. You don't really need to do it on a Windows server. Uh, best practice, I think, to me would be put the WAMP on a server-side operating system. Don't do it on the Windows 7. Windows 7 is not really secure to maintain a Windows server. Uh, so let's let's begin. You know, I downloaded the application. Um, nice little UAC. I'm gonna hit yes on this, and uh, let's follow the prompts. We're gonna hit next. Uh, before I hit next, look at right here in the corner. This is everything that's gonna be downloaded. Uh, the latest versions of the WAMP servers, which is 2.4, Apache, MySQL, PHP, PHP Admin, which is a nice little web GUI that allows you to maintain the PHP stuff, uh, SQL Buddy, and X Debug, which is also great applications. Uh, we're gonna hit next on this. I do accept the agreement. Hit next, and this is the default location that your WAMP files are going to be located. Now, a lot of people uh, like to change this into a different location. What I recommend is don't drop it in your C drive. Drop it into another partition, guys, okay? This is where you're going to be having all your websites, uh, all your HTML, all your PHP files located, your configuration files within, uh, with uh, your Apache stuff, your configuration for... Uh, PHP and as well as your database so you want to keep all that stuff in a separate volume so I'm gonna leave it as a C drive for this video only and um, hit next and I do want to create a quick launch icon as well as a desktop icon I'm not gonna do a quick launch I'm changing my mind and I'm gonna hit next and we're gonna hit install now the installation shouldn't take no more than I would say two or three minutes it's it's really quick really fast uh, at the lower right hand side of the taskbar where the time is at most likely you're gonna see a big W so I'm gonna uh, just check always show icons notification and uh, once the installation is done on the again on the lower right hand side of the taskbar you're gonna see a nice little W uh, Firefox has been detected on your computer would you like to use it as a default browser for the WIM app now, depending on what browser you have on your server, uh, a lot of servers come with IE. Uh, I've seen a lot of people actually install Firefox. 
uh, because it works and handles the pages of a website a little better. So that's the reason why I have Firefox on it. So I'm going to hit yes. I want this to be my default one. Awesome. As you can see on the desktop, it created a nice little shortcut. You're going to get this on your Windows server side. Now, I don't think you're going to receive this on the Windows server side. I've never, I don't think I've seen this, but on a Windows 7 side, you're going to see a Windows security alert. It basically wants you to give it access uh, to your firewall because it does block certain features. Uh, so I'm going to say give it access to everything and allow access and uh, it's going to continue the installation. Okay, so once you hit uh, next, you're going to get this. Now, now, if you're hosting your site, most likely you're going to have an SNTP server, which allows you to email, uh, you know, you probably have like a contact, like contact blah, blah at this email. And you want your web server to handle all that stuff. You want your web server to handle the emailing part. I'm going to leave this as localhost for now. And the domain, let's, uh, let's put my email address like that. And we're going to hit next. And uh, we're going to leave launch WIM app server 2 now. We're going to want to launch it and we're going to hit finish. And it's going to want you to give it access because the manager needs, uh, you know, it needs permission for it to run. And we're going to hit yes. And if you go at the lower right corner, like I told you guys, you're going to see a nice little W. It changed to red to orange to green. Now, when it's green, that's a good thing. I mean, a really good thing because... It basically uh, tells you that the services are running. Now, the way that you know the services are running, if you let's go to, I'm going to open up my browser. And once my browser is up at the URL address bar, I'm going to type in local host and hit enter. Now, if everything goes well, you should get the win app server web page basically letting you know what apache version you have the php version uh whatever extensions are enabled uh your mysql extension version actually and uh so WAMP server is basically installed now some troubleshooting techniques if you're having any issues with your WAMP server you there's one thing I forgot to tell you guys is if when you download this you got to make sure you download the Visual C++ 2010 service pack packages for your correct platform if you're running an 86 bit server make sure you download the 32 bit if you're running a 64 bit server make sure that you download the 64 bit again when you click on the link to download the wimp the wimp app server uh, it's going to tell you that it's going to give you a nice little warning in the canon that you need this first. So let's configure IWAMP a little further. So configuration is pretty simple. Again, at the lower right corner of your taskbar, you have the nice little W, which is the WAMP server. Uh, if you just click on it, you get this nice little uh, dialog box. And let's go into the WW directory. Now, the WW directory is basically the section of where you drop your files in. Uh, I have a PHP uh, file called index. Uh, the PHP.index is basically the local host is what we saw with all the information. So I'm actually going to right click, go to new, go to folder, and I'm going to go old. And I'm just going to drop this PHP there. And I want to go to new. And we're going to create a new text file. And the text file is going to call index dot html and the format didn't change but it is okay and we're gonna give it h1 and we're gonna go welcome to my website pretty simple right and we're gonna close the eight we're gonna close the h1 tag we're gonna close our body and we need to close our html which i actually forgot to open it up at the very beginning and I'm gonna hit enter and then I need to open up my HTML tag so I'm actually gonna go file save as and I'm gonna go all files and I'm gonna save it and yes replace it it should have created an HTML file but it doesn't look like it modified this so let's do it one more time it's still saving it like that so let's go into tools Folder options, view, uh, hide, apply, okay. 
and we're gonna do this there we go and we are going into our Firefox and let's type in localhost and see what happens and there you go welcome to my website awesome so that works with no problem the title BJ uh, you know, BTN production I'm gonna close this up close that up so that's that's how you add um, HTML files in it now by default your website is currently only accessible by computers that WIMP uh, WAMP server uh, is installed on so that's actually perfect for anyone that's actually testing the WAMP server uh, for deployment purposes but if you want to make the website accessible to the rest of the world you actually have to go into your nice little dialog box and just put online just click put online like right now it's servers online and servers online right now so the green basically tells you that it is online okay guys but Apache by default has a configuration file that is actually set to deny incoming connection from anyone except the local host so that means we actually have to change that uh, if not, you're going to get a nice little 4.3 forbidden page error, and you guys don't really want that. So let's let's go modify that. So again, let's go back into our WAMP server, click on the dialog box, and go to Apache. And you want to go into the HTTP d.config file. And you want to locate the order deny allow section. So let's locate that. Okay, so once you locate this line right here, order deny allow and deny from all, you actually need to change this. And the modifications that you need to change is this. You want order, allow, and deny. And the second line should be basically allow from all. So once you do these modifications, order, allow, deny, and allow from all you want to go to file save the file close and then after you do that you need to restart all your services so we actually gonna go back into our WAMP server dialog box right here and restart all the services as you can see it's changing to orange then red orange red and then green you're back online now your sh now your site should now be accessible to the World Wide web but not as of yet because most likely your home server, the, the server that you're hosting your WAMP server to is attached to a router, okay? So this involves a little bit of port forwarding on your side as well as uh, your machine or your router has or your ISP provider provides you a external IP address. And this external IP address is only a bunch of numbers, but you don't want to give your clients or anyone a bunch of numbers. You want them to give you want to give them an address like www.bj.news or bjtechnews.org. That's what you want to provide them. You don't want to give them a bunch of numbers of 111.1112. You don't want to give that stuff, right? So you need your router to do port forwarding uh, a little bit, and then you probably need to get like a service like GoDaddy uh, to actually provide a, um, a DNS, uh, a domain name, you know, service uh, or alias. Okay. So I'm actually going to show you how to do port forwarding on my side. Uh, so I actually have a Netgear router. And I'm actually within the port forwarding and port trigger. I have port forwarding and I want to do it at a custom and never for the site. And I want to do a new service. So the new service is going to be HTTP, right? Uh, actually, I could cancel this because I already have a service already named. And you need to provide it the IP address. Now, the IP address for this local machine, because I'm doing everything virtualized, I think is uh, .18. There you go. It is .18. And I'm just going to add .18. And there you go. Now, you need, to you need to figure out what's your external IP address. What's the IP address that your internet service provider, your ISP, provides you? Now, to get that, a lot of people will normally go into Google and just write, what's my IP address? And once you do that, you're going to basically get your external IP address. Now, this is another tool out there called Open Port Check Tool, uh, which allows you to do a testing for port forwarding. Uh, and from there, it's going to provide you your external address. Uh, and from 
there's another section that allows you to check whatever port open port finder you have now I actually have uh, port 80 open for my router as you can see and if I do a check it's basically trying to attain the port status and it's closed so that's pretty strange that it's closed but I have it open to okay 80 80 and that's it guys hopefully you guys enjoy it on how to host your own web server on a windows server machine using wamp server and uh, if you have any questions please let me know and i'll catch you guys later peace out